pulled away from the ball. And that is going to go on the Hawkeyes. It's Pierre Pierce picking up his first personal. So you see Alford's numbers in that NIT that Doug alluded to, 105 points as Bryant misses the pull up. Iowa comes the other way and the person appears. The quintessential off guard in college basketball. This is Worley. Now Pierce. They will be keeping an eye on that matchup between Pierce and Bryant. But Bryant's got him early on. Worley. Worley, a guy as a senior, can step out, score the basketball, much more effective facing the basket than with his back to the basket. And it's interesting, for St. Louis, they play a packed man-to-man -man defense. They want you to shoot jump shots with a hand in your face. Now the jumper by the hometown guy is well short. As Sloan misses that one. Pierce coming the other way for the Hawkeyes. And they call the block, much to the displeasure of the group here. The foul is going to go against Reggie Bryant, his first. And Glenn Worley, a face-up jump shooter, and Steve Alford, quite frankly, said he has been our X-Factor all year. They As he goes, so do we. Now the little leaner by Horner doesn't go. So the Billikens coming the other way. 2-2 Two -two ball game early on is Hunt. Leaves it for Fisher, drives to the hoop, and Fisher is called for the offensive foul. Pretty simple. What you see is what you get. Man-to-man -man defense from both teams. Bruner feet planted. Probably an offensive foul, especially because he lowered his shoulder. And, and, and at this point in the game, you try, try to find out who really wants to be here, especially of the seniors. You look at Boyd, who has the ball now. This could be his last basketball game. It's up to him to motivate the Hawkeyes to say, look, I don't want to go home. I don't want to start putting my resume together looking for a job. A spinning inside is Bruner, and he draws the foul on Ian Viukas. Well, again, St. Louis always tries to stay on the ground. Their idea is not to block shots, but simply be there force you to shoot with a hand in your face, whether it's in the post or out on the perimeter. First foul on Vayukas. Bruner goes to the line, part of a very talented sophomore class for the Hawkeyes. Misses his first one. Second leading rebounder in the Big Ten this year. And he hits one of two. St. Louis a much better team when they play with the lead. Their style is difficult to come back from, but much like a running team in football. If they trail early, that clock seems to chip away at what they're able to do. This is Hunt now. The former walk-on leaves it well short, and it's going to go to the Hawkeyes. Well, we were talking about the Iowa sophomores and the contributions that they have made, and there you see the numbers, and they are very impressive. It's Pierre Pierce, Jeff Horner, Greg Bruner, and Eric Hansen. The only caveat there, a cynic might tell you, you saw a lot of those numbers in the 50s. Well, they only have seven scholarship players left. The Sloan is on the break, has it blocked by Worley. Here they come the other way now. Pierce trying to finish it, he does. And that's where Pierre Pierce it can be really effective. And boy, an interesting call here from the official. A technical foul on the St. Louis bench. And it was almost like a delayed technical foul. See a player down for the Hawkeyes, too, which is something they can ill afford. It's Greg Bruner who is down. As you know, take a look at what happened as you look at Steve Alford there, and, and Soderberg extremely unhappy. Porter going to the line, and he will shoot one more. Now he wants to speak with the official. The official is shaking his head. <laughs> That's no part of a discussion. <laughs> Let's see. As uh, now, that should be either a foul. I guess you go with the no call. Got to be something. That it? looks like a foul. Yeah, that, that, that's a foul. That's a foul. His feet were not planted. What's interesting is Iowa goes down the score. They're they're playing four on five basketball. And if Bruner stays in the game, I was going to say Iowa can really afford that to finish up that thought on 
the sophomores, I mean, yeah, they're accounting for in the 50s and all those statistics, but four of the seven guys who are on scholarship to our left are sophomores, as Bayukas leaves it short, and that's 57%, so maybe those guys are just doing exactly what they should be doing. Now Pierce tries to get an inside, nice ball movement. Worley's going to try a three, and he hits it. So good sign for the Hawkeyes early. Well, Brad Soderberg's got to get a timeout here. His team does not have nearly the energy of the pep in their step that Iowa does, and that's why the Hawkeyes have jumped out to that 10-2 lead. And at this point in the season, you know who wants the ball, where they want the ball, and Glenn Worley already hit a two-point jump shot. That from behind the international line, as you can see, three lines on the court. Quite difficult if you're an official, but easy from where we sit, but that is definitely a three in international or college competition. Well, the NIT continues over on ESPN tonight. First round action as Missouri battles Michigan. A couple former Duke assistants going head to head. Quinn Snyder takes on his former colleague, Tommy Amaker. Again, it is Missouri and Michigan, 9 p.m. Eastern time tonight on ESPN. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And there you see one of the many good matchups couple of the stars in that game Doug. and Missouri a top five preseason team with four senior starters and they're gonna have to make a decision going into Chrysler Arena tonight do they want this to be their last game Iowa shooting three of six so far including one of three behind the arc St. Louis just one of six and it's interesting here if you're an official and you miss a call don't compound it by calling it technical because you feel like the, the, the coach showed you up just walk over to the sideline and say coach I missed it, and that's the end of it. Now a foul away from the ball, and that's going to go against Jeff Horner of the Hawkeyes, and a sarcastic cheer goes up from the crowd here in St. Charles. Ah, yes, the old makeup call, Dave. <laughs> it's 10-2. to 2. Brad Soderbergh's team's got a lot of ground to make up. Down by eight early. Back in St. Charles, Missouri, all Hawkeyes early on, Doug, and been a lot of desire yeah it's been a lot of desire especially beginning at the defensive end no easy baskets for the hawkeyes or excuse me no easy baskets for the billikins the hawkeyes beginning their fast break with several of these blocks and there's pierre pierce wisely getting the run out and that's really been the story it's been the activity of the iowa hawkeyes at the defensive end that's led to their scoring at the offensive end 22 to 9 you see the numbers and again as doug said a lot of those shots Coming off transition, accounts for the good field goal shooting percentage. Pierce crashing the boards. That's been a big story as well. But Pierre Pierce gets called for the walk right there. And Iowa has had some success even recently in the NIT. Last year, they lost to Georgia Tech by one in the quarterfinals for the right to go to New York City. I'm sure most of these guys said, look, we were that close to going to the big town for the Final Four of this tournament last year. Iowa cranking it up on defense a little bit here. It's the third straight year the Hawkeyes have been in the NIT. Now inside, Bayukas has it blocked. How about a shot fake? I mean, if they're going to block every shot, you have to make an adjustment and, and, and pump fake every down again. Well, Eric Hansen, a guy who led the Big Ten in conference play in shot blocks. Worley into the lane, draws the foul, and gets it to go. And this is just a breakdown in Billiken's defense, but Iowa has been solid defensively. Watch hands. Right in front of you, you're going to have to either create more space or have a pump fake. And Glenn Worley taking the ball to the basket. This is the breakdown of the Billiken's defense. They want no splits. They run a pack man-to-man -man defense, which means, of course, everything from the outside first and those slashing, driving hoops are supposed to be the last thing allowed by, by Slew. And, and they have been ineffective so far defensively. Isaac Ohanen picking up that foul, number two on him. He takes a seat. Worley completes the three-point play. Hey, this is impressive so far from Iowa. You know, a four, four-and-a-half-hour bus trip because, you know, any time the NIT plays a game within 300 miles, you have to bus to it. They just found out Sunday. I mean, they knew they weren't going to the NCAA tournament, but they found out Sunday. No real scatter report chances. Uh, you know, you have limited tape. But they've been active, they've been aggressive, and they look like they want to be here and they want to move on to this tournament. Again, this is an Iowa team playing with just seven scholarship players. In fact, they put a walk on into the game as Sloan misses the three. Kurt Spurgeon, number 30, is in there. They've had some defections this year, they've had some injuries, they've had some academic problems. But 
all added up to them missing the NCAA tourney, but a very impressive performance with the limited group early on here. Now Fisher out top. Shot clock is at 15. Darren Clark will pull up, and he hits it. And the youngster getting a chance to get some minutes early in this game. And you want to stay in, you better be active if you're a, a Billick. Well, everyone is active for Iowa, forcing the action. Kurt Spurgeon, the walk-on, drawing the foul there. And you see the guys who are out for the Hawkeyes. Jared Reiner, Nick DeWitts, Mike Henderson, Sean Sonderleiter. There is Jared Reiner on the bench. He and Sonderleiter, both big guys. And that really hurt. But the guy that Steve Alford pointed to today, who he said is really the issue for them, is Mike Henderson. Because he said he's a guy who is athletic, and gives us a dimension we just really don't have right now. Yeah, well, Ryan to the big center. I mean, look at how wide those shoulders are. That's the guys that they need inside their offense to be able to score with his back to the basket. But Williams' ability to break down the defense. They don't have a creator on this team. Pierce is a creator, but it's a creator for himself. And Williams is a guy, if he gets eligible next year, could allow this Iowa team, excuse me, Henderson, to, it, Mike Henderson, if he comes back next year, could allow them to be so much more effective in the Big Ten. A foul goes on Kurt Spurgeon. Dave Revs and Doug Gottlieb with you. It is the first round of the NIT. Iowa taking on St. Louis at the Family Arena in St. Charles, Missouri. Hawkeyes shooting very well early on. 9 of 17, up by 16 right now on the Billikens. Now a three on the way trying to chip into that lead. It's Fisher. He's unable to do so. And the rebound to a guy who's played very well early on, Eric Hansen. Now Bruner. Around on the baseline. Bruner leaves it short. Rebound goes to Bryant. Here comes Sloan on the breakout. Sloan one on one with Porter, and the local guy misses the jam. So everything going wrong for the Billikens. Now the alley oop on the other end. Things get a bit sloppy. Hawkeyes get it back though. It's Pierre Pierce. Uh, not exactly an impressive that was series separate. of offensive no. plays. No, we'd be lying if we said it were, but uh, it ends up. Working out for Iowa is just about everything he has, Doug. And St. Louis, not a team that, that, that comes from behind very well. Fisher going to try the three again, and he misses that one. Bruner the rebound. Now here comes Pierce. No numbers for Iowa. Pierce going to take it anyway. Leaves it short. This is Bryant. He, too, has no numbers. He, too, is going to take it, <laughs> and he hits. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. Uh. Well, not exactly the prettiest offensive basketball as Sloan goes in, and he is a local product, grew up in St. Charles, and it's one thing if you're on national TV where your boys are going to see you miss a dunk, but it's a whole other thing when you have family and friends in the stand. And Reggie Bryant is the guy who could go up and score the basketball. And he's going to need to take over, take the Billikens on his back and get this game to within 10, make it respectable before the half. Ball was on Greg Bruner, his first. As Bryant, the third leading scorer in Conference USA, a transfer from Villanova, hits the free throw right there. You see Iowa, when they're challenged at the offensive end, remember that Mike Henderson is a guy that they're missing. They felt like to break down the defense. But outside of him, there aren't guys that can create their own lanes, with the exception of Pierre Pierce. Now Worley. This is Bruner. Ball's knocked out of bounds. It's going to stay with the Hawkeyes. So take a look at Steve Alford. He said he is very proud of what this group has done, given just how short the rotation has become this year. Certainly a guy's feeling a little bit of heat. Yep. Fifth year at Iowa, just one time he's made the NCAA tournament. And the shot clock expires there so not a great set there for the Hawkeyes but a great start certainly Steve Alford's team up by 15 we'll look back on the season that has been so far for the Hawkeyes trying to continue it right now here in St. Charles St. Louis just two of its last 11 from the field big part of the reason why they find themselves down by 15 to the Hawkeyes early on Dave Rebs and Doug Gottlieb back in St. Charles, Missouri, as we take a look at Iowa's season thus far, Doug. Yeah, two and six versus teams in the NCAA tournament. Those two wins came early against Louisville and then against Eastern Washington at home. And 
really didn't beat anybody in the Big Ten that they weren't supposed to beat. And that's, that's the reason that they're playing in the NIT. Two losses to Northwestern also keep you out of the big dance. You, you win both of those games, all of a sudden you're looking at 11 and five. There's no shame in that. That was a 500 team in the league <laughs> this year. Okay, you can lose to Northwestern in Chicago, but you can't lose to them in Iowa City. A uh, big thing, they were 0-4 against the Big Ten teams, the three Big Ten teams that made it to the NCAA tournament. They did not do well against the teams in their league that were turning bound as the foul on the floor there goes on Darren Clark, number two on him. On the other hand, St. Louis had a lot of success against the Conference USA teams that were in the NCAA tournament, winning four games. Yeah, they really did. It, it, they, they won at Dayton, they won at DePaul, and they beat Memphis in their tournament. But they lost to DePaul at home, they lost at Southwest Missouri State, at West Virginia. They lost to Arizona by one in a game earlier this year at the Savage Center, just down the road here. And that was kind of a turning point in the season, because you get that Arizona win, and you get some confidence. And they, too, struggled with the top-level teams in Conference USA. A Horner, a rare miss at the free throw line there. See, you jinxed him. It just took you a while for yeah, the jinx uh -huh. to be effective. If he misses the free throw three years from now, <laughs> you have it blamed on me. This is Sloan. Now Bryant. Sloan going to try the three ball, and he hits it. Oh, there you go. When you grew up just down the road here, you miss a dunk. You better start to make things happen, or else when this offseason begins, and it could begin in about 27 minutes, if he doesn't get going, your boys will give you a lot of heat. Now Horner right through the lane, has it knocked away. Here comes St. Louis. It's Josh Fisher with the two-on-one. Gets it for Clark, who lays it in. Five quick points now for the Billikens, and they have cut this deficit to 10. This is how St. Louis has to play. Reggie Bryant penetrates, kicks off to a teammate. There's Sloan behind the international three. Always counts for three. And then the run out, being able to score off of your defense. Again, not a pure fast-breaking team, but when you get the turnover, and Iowa has struggled with turnovers. They're 10th in the conference, in the Big Ten conferences here, in turnover ratio. That's led to easy baskets in the season. And now for the Billiton. So it's a 10-point game, as we remind you. We've got more NIT first-round action coming your way over on ESPN. 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, Missouri against Michigan. Michigan, a team that beat Iowa in round one of the Big Ten tournament. Knocked the Hawkeyes out. For more information on that one, log on to ESPN.com. And we take a look at that portion of the bracket. You see the Missouri-Michigan winner goes on to meet the winner of LSU and Oklahoma. Rematch of the Sugar Bowl. Rematch of the Sugar Bowl. Throw out the BCS. The Tigers come in without Jaime Lareda, and uh, they have struggled. And Hawaii taking on Utah State. The uh, Utah State fans a little bitter after being left out of the tournament after be after going 25-3 and three on the season. I'll say, yeah, they, they were not happy. Stu Morrill certainly very upset. This team had a great regular season. Now, great entry pass, and Horner gets fouled on the way up as Bruner, the big guy, got it down low, and that gets Horner back to the line. And beautiful set out of the timeout as Steve Alford says, I've seen enough of the motion offense. He likes to run some sets coming out of timeouts, some sets when he needs a basket. A little bit different than his mentor, Bob Knight. Ball on Anthony Drea. And Horner a shooter, so watch the fade screen. Passes to the big fella. Worley sets the fade screen. If you go over the top, that's the proper cut to the basket. You see no help there, and that's the, the play set. Horner now into double figures with 10. Now if Bryant goes under the screen, Horner pops out for the jump shot. That's reading a screen. That's a well-coached offensive basketball play. He turned it into two points right there. A 30-19 game. This is Ross Barner into the game for St. Louis. He wears number 25. Barner taking it to the hoop. Nowhere to go. And knocked away by Brody Boyd. Shot clock winding down towards 10. Now Bryant. Shot clock winding towards 5. They're going to have to take a shot. Slow fires up the 3. It is well short. And Horner coming the other way. Now Boyd. Bruner with the turnaround off glass. That doesn't go. Drea gets in there and gets the board. 
battle for it, and here comes Fisher. He's got Sloan, who gets hacked by Bruner on the way up. Well, Brad Soderberg wants to play faster. I mean, look, true, he is a product of the blocker-mover offense. He loves the motion offense. He loves slowing it down and allowing his staff to outcoach other staffs. However, in order to win, you have to at times be able to push and come from behind and play quicker. He feels like, though, that the athleticism of this team is not yet at the level where they can run the entire game. Yeah, he said you kind of have to be who you are, yep. and certainly if he has a more athletic team, he will push it in the future. Sloan hits the first one. Sloan, a great story, a guy who's legendary for his dedication. He got the flu his sophomore year. Instead of going on the team flight to Chicago to play DePaul, he rode on his back for five hours in the car getting an IV drip, got some more IV the next day, and played against the Blue Demons. It's just the kind of guy he is. Tells you everything you need to know about Chris Sloan. There you go. And he doesn't want this to be his last game. He's shown a lot of energy, and suddenly it's become offensive points for him as that energy has just proved effective. Foul away from the ball. It's going to go against the Hawkeyes, and it's going to be against Glenn Worley. Now suddenly you get active defensively. Let's see if we can see Glenn Worley. The push-off was what was called. Cannot see it from that angle. But take the official's word for it. <laughs> we'll trust it. First foul on Glenn Worley. <laughs> now we got another foul away from the ball. It's going to be a hold on the Hawkeyes down low. Going to go against Brody Boy. We got a better look. We got a better look at it here. Watch the left side of your screen. Leaning in. Oh, that is that is not a foul. Oh. Oh. You'll be all right, buddy? Well, maybe they're fans of, of, of the worldwide leader. Trying to keep it close for us. Trying to keep the fans in the game. But that was not a moving screen. You have to actually make contact on the screen. That's the point of contention as a former player. I don't mind if you call a moving screen, but the guy's got to actually make contact on the moving screen in order for it to be called. Drea hits one of two free throws. Lead is down to nine. Long three on the way from Brody Boyd, not there. Drea comes out of there with a the rebound for the Billikoos. Now Drea spinning into the lane, off glass at Drea. Now has six points. Now it's when St. Louis has been able to put their head down and drive the ball to the basket that there have been openings in the Iowa defense. Crowd starting to come to life here. That'll sap a little bit of the energy out of him as Drea gets the foul inside number two on him. And Anthony Drea puts his head down, nice little on ball screen, a little bit of shake, a spin, throw it up and in. Interesting crowd we have here because the wrestling national championships are going to be taking place a little later this week down the street at the Sabbath Center. So we actually have a bunch of Iowa fans in attendance. So it's not just a pro slew crowd right now. We saw Drea there trying to fire up these St. Louis fans, but there are a lot of Hawkeye fans in attendance as Brody Boyd gets his first points. You see some of the yellow and black there in the stands. Boyd, a guy from a town of about 1,000. Duggar, Indiana. 28 people in his graduating class. Shows Iowa over then coach Bob Knight and Indiana. That's a tough thing to do for an in-state <laughs> kid. And he says he's turned Duggar, Duggar from a pro Indiana town to now a pro Iowa town. That's a tough thing to do in the state. That is yeah. a tough thing yeah. to do. As that might be turning down Bob turning Knight. Down Bob Knight. Yes. Exactly. That's a, that's one of those ones that if Bob Knight doesn't pick up the phone and you just leave a message that you're not attending Indiana, <laughs> probably a better decision. <laughs> just send him a note. <laughs> Maybe a telegram. This is slow now. Now Brian penetrating. He can't hit. Porter coming out of there for the Hawkeyes. Still more aggressive, penetrating the basket, getting mid-range jump shots instead of threes with a hand in your face. And Rand, number 20 in there for Iowa. Hanson has it knocked away, and Bryant gets it. Watch the movement of the wings for St. Louis. Bryant misses that one. 
Or watch the quick shots from the wings. <laughs> watch the ill-advised jumper. Oh. This is Pierre Pierce. The fadeaway there. He leaves it well short. Rebound out of Hanson. It's tracked down by Rand. Very patient here. And Hunt gets called for the foul. It's number one on Philip Hunt. Well, with a nine point lead in your best free throw shooter at the line, you hope to be up 11 at the end of this series. If you're Iowa, you have to have that killer instinct. You say, well, look, we have to get this maybe to 15 and make St. Louis go into the locker room thinking we have no chance in this game. Warner rolls home the first one. Double bonus situation for the Billikens. See, it's different for when I do it. Rather. You see how it's, it's different when I do it. I said he's going to make these two free throws. He makes these two free throws. Because well, you understand the psychology of the game. That is what it's all about. Look at you. 12 <laughs> points now for <laughs> Jeff Horner. As the Hawkeyes have an 11-point lead. Okay, Pam, thanks a lot. 11-point Iowa lead right here over St. Louis. Yeah, and, and when you look at Iowa and what they've been able to do to be effective in the first half, it starts at the defensive end blocking shots, getting rebounds, and getting the ball out to guys like Pierre Pierce. And Pierce has really bought it, taking mid-range shots, not a great three-point shooter, but you haven't seen him jack up too many bad shots, and that's why he's been effective. Pierce getting the better of the star watch. With the eight points and the five rebounds. Bryant just the five points so far for the Billikens. Try to work the trap on Sloan. Now Varner. Fisher leaves it well short. Now gets it back. Three on the way from Sloan. Can't get it to go. And the rebound to Horner. And Steve Alford comes out of the timeout with a quick trap, taking St. Louis out of whatever place that they want to run. Pierce on the baseline, and it's an offensive foul on Pierre Pierce. And that is going to be three on Pierre Pierce. NBA Fast Break Tuesday comes up at 9 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. Kevin Frazier, Tim Legler, Greg Anthony, and David Aldridge. LeBron is rolling. We'll talk about that. Allen Iverson's team in action tonight. They'll discuss his future in Philadelphia and a possible finals preview between the Kings and the Nets. You see Kobe Bryant and Tracy McGrady go at it last night in L.A. Wow, what a game. What a second half. Kobe Bryant. It's actually going to be two fouls on Pierre Pierce. On one play? No, two fouls of the game. I think I may have said three. Jumper is not there by Bryant, so his struggles continue. And Horner coming the other way with it. Well, that's tough. If you're playing on the road, you get two fouls for one charge. That would be the, you know, the, the <laughs> road officiating, right? <laughs> we told you that St. Louis really struggles when they get out-rebounded by their opponents. They are just getting dominated by the Hawkeyes so far. A Horner trying to lob into Bruner. It goes off his hands. And it's going to go to the Billikens. Well, Bruner tried to spin Seal to get the lob. And watch, Bruner just spins, pins his man. And I, well, I think he's got to catch that. Pass was, pass was lofted in there. But he was sitting down on his heels a little bit too much. And you're a big guy. You have to be off of those heels so that if a pass is a little further in front of you, you can tip it to yourself and gather it. It's a nice heel, but an ineffective play because he wasn't able to catch it. Nice seal, bad heel. Barnett. Now Bryant trying to get something going. Pulls up. He can't get it to go. Barner though comes out of there with a rebound for the Billikens. And they get a fresh 35 as we wind down in the final one minute and ten seconds of the first half here. First round of the NIT. It has been all Hawkeyes up by 11 over St. Louis. Barner going to try a three. Can't get it to go, and Worley comes out of there with the rebound. This is Rand. 
good minutes out of the bench. Steve Alford has, and he doesn't have a very deep bench. I just wanted a double dribble there. Now Rand. This has not been a pretty possession. It doesn't end in a hoop for the Hawkeyes. And it's not a pretty possession, but still, it takes St. Louis's legs away because they have to defend for 30 seconds. But this is what you can't do if you're Iowa. You can't foul on an offensive rebound because now all of a sudden St. Louis gets a chance to get this lead under 10 going into the break. I mean, St. Louis has been completely ineffective offensively with the exception of getting to the foul line and getting a couple of runouts. Glenn Worley committing the foul. That's number two on him. So Sloan goes to the line, and as you say, Doug, a chance to get this thing under 10 if he hits them both. 74.8% on the season. Hawkeyes have been living at the free throw line and living well in this first half. Eight points now for Sloan. Coming up at the half, Pam Ward and Digger Phelps. The latest on Terrell Owens, now an eagle. Digger talking NCAA tidbits, and he will look at the early round NCAA and make his picks for you. That's all coming up just over 20 seconds from right now, 35-25, and the Hawkeyes just going to take the air out of it here, Doug. Digger Phelps claims to be the biggest Gonzaga Zag fan in the country, and you and I know some folks in Spokane that would definitely battle him for that award. There are some passionate fans out there in Gonzaga getting their number two seed this year. Now Horner, the clock winding down, and Brody Boyd falls down. No call, so it's going to go to St. Louis. And you can see Glenn Worley. He set the pick and popped out for the jump shot, had his feet set. Horner forced this backdoor pass to Boyd. Question is, what's Boyd going to do with it if he catches it in there? That's, that's not a wise decision. Well, he did catch it, and he fell down out of bounds. There you go. That answers your question. Four seconds, plenty of time to get it all the way to the basket, take it to the cup even for a layup. They try to get it down court. Should have been a hole there. No call, and now there is a call. Just before... The horn went. They call a foul on the Hawkeyes. And if you see what happened, Glenn Worley was taken out of the game because he's in foul trouble. There was the grab of the jersey right there. And they actually called the foul on Hanson, but they missed an obvious foul on Jack Brownlee. Yep. But Sloan... Rightfully so. Stuck his hands up, said, I got Brownlee on me. A clear mismatch. Sloan getting a chance to get this thing to pack. And Sloan under. able to hit one of two, and they do, in fact, get it under 10. Not necessarily in the way that we thought they would, but it is a nine-point game. Jeff Horner doing a lot of the damage for Iowa. We're at halftime with the Hawkeyes on top by nine. Now let's send it to Pam Ward with the halftime report. News presentation of the postseason NIT brought to you by Lakita. Now get in on our spring fever special. For reservations, go to LQ.com. Now, despite the fact that they did not hit a field goal in their last 15 possessions, Iowa leads in this game 35 to 26 to start the second half. Dave Revs and Doug Gottlieb with you. You hear that stat and you think, well, Iowa's got to be trailing. How is it that they're not, Doug? Well, they're hitting the boards, they're blocking shots, and they're getting to the free throw line. 14 of 16 from the line in the first half. But it begins at the defensive end for the Hawkeyes as they've been active, they've been aggressive, and there have been a limited amount of easy shots for the St. Louis Bill Kids. Lots of the block shot, begins a fast break. Here's another block shot. Nothing has been easy for St. Louis. And for Iowa, they've been active, they've been aggressive. Porter has crashed the glass, and he's just a guard. But you know what? He's got eight free throw attempts, excuse me, nine free throw attempts with eight makes already. Chris Sloan has been the lone factor in the St. Louis offense that's been a bright spot. And, and as he goes, maybe so goes St. Louis, because they need somebody to step up. Obviously, when we looked at our star watch, Reggie Bryant was the guy we thought would play well. But everywhere he's gone, a Hawkeye has been there, and another Hawkeye has been in help. So maybe a guy like Sloan needs to step up and hit shots. This is Sloan with the ball right now. Talk about guys stepping up for Iowa. Eric Hansen, this team with just seven scholarship players. He's coming off the bench. No points, but four rebounds, three blocks for him. So he made a big difference inside for them. This is Bryant. Now Varner getting the start in the second half. And Drea, guys who didn't start in the first half. 
Barner missing the three as Worley tracks it down. And St. Louis did not come out from their halftime, I'm going to say lambasting probably, until about a minute and 30 remaining on that halftime clock. I'm going to guess Brad Soderberg was not happy. Beautiful backdoor pass, and Brody Boyd gets the lay-in. Four points now for Brody Boyd. Andrea taking into the lane. Barmer going to try another one. That's not there. And the rebound to Worley. Now Pierre Pierce. Look at Andrea. And Pierce called for using the elbow. And that will be number three on Pierre Pierce. Well, what do you do if you're Steve Alford to keep him in the game? Well, I'd probably leave him in. If, if a guy like Pierre Pierce has played in foul trouble at different times in the season, and when you have your best play and your leading scorer on the road in the NIT trying to get a win, you have a chance to blow this thing open right now, I would leave him in the game. And they're going to go to a 2-3 zone, which also protects Pierre Pierce. Oh, on inside. This is Bryant. His jump step into the lane, and he hits. Seven points now for Bryant. Now Pierce tries to get it back door. Sloan with the quick hands, but Worley comes up with it. Now cutting into the lane was Boyd. That ball is kicked, so they'll reset the shot clock. Take a look at the numbers from the first half, and the field goal percentage obviously jumps out of you, and you mentioned the free throws as well, Doug. Yeah, well, that's just one reason that uh, Iowa has been successful in this game. They've gotten to the line, they've been aggressive, they've attacked the glass. Pretty simple philosophy. You shoot, excuse me, you make twice as many free throws as the other team shoots. That's a goal of most coaches, and you'll usually be successful. A rebounding number, obviously terrible for St. Louis. Bruner hits inside. We should mention that Tom Frerichs is not playing for them. He is their leading rebounder. He has a shoulder injury that he battled throughout the Conference USA tournament. So it goes a long way towards explaining why the Billikens have struggled on the glass. But Iowa's been playing without their starting center, without his backup, and without several other players. They've been missing actually seven scholarship players. Well, Bryant's starting to get going now, Doug. That's a three. He is now in double figures, 10 points, five of them here in the first two minutes and 45 seconds of the second half. Well, we put him on our star lot for a reason, and so suddenly the star begins to shine. Now Horners, the crowd starting to come to life a little bit. Boyd hanging, loses the ball. Here comes St. Louis the other way. It's Fisher. Leaves it for Sloan. Who lays it in? Opportunistic fast break for St. Louis as they look for a crease, look for an opening, and suddenly we have a ball game. A six-point game, a 7-2 run for the Billikens, getting them right back in this one as the crowd in St. Charles getting into it. Worley working around Sloan, who's called for the block. First foul on Chris Sloan. Take a look here at Brody Boyd reading the screen. Watch Brody Boyd. He is the one in the far left-hand corner. Reggie Bryant's guarding him. He turns his head and tries to guess that Boyd is going to come up off the screen because he's a shooter instead. Boom, quick back cut and the easy layup. Now Boyd off the inbounds pass. This is Pierce. Here, Pierce gets into the lane. And the other half of our star watch gets his first two of the second half. But you also have to credit Greg Bruner because he turned, he was posting up, and he sealed his man, and it actually screened two of the Billikens. That's what opened up that little lane. Stems the tie just a bit. Opens the lead. Back up to eight for the Hawkeyes who've led throughout here. Now Bryant again. This time he misses the reverse. Bruner comes out of there, and here's Pierre Pierce. Here's a great slasher, takes it into the lane, can't get it to go. Worley, though, has the rebound taken away. Now back up with it goes Worley. And they call the foul. Well, Iowa has just been more aggressive on the board. They just wanted it just a little bit more, and that's why they have the lead. 
Second foul on Chris Sloan there. The Hawkeyes, Glenn Worley and company, on top by eight here over Brad Soderberg's crew. Okay, thanks a lot, Pam. Of course, we got to see Lehigh win the Patriot League the other day in dramatic fashion. Here we're seeing Iowa on top of St. Louis, 41-33, Doug. Yeah, and Iowa has been more aggressive at the offensive end, especially on the glass, and that's why they have this lead. But St. Louis has shown spurts of life, especially running off of their defense. Be interesting to see how aggressive they are defensively against the Hawkeyes. This is a team that's in the top 10 nationally in scoring defense. They haven't really shown it so far here today. They allow less than 60 points per game. Now Pierce has it blocked by Fisher, a late whistle, and Fisher gets called for the foul. Well, Josh Fisher's a senior, and he doesn't want to go home early, but let's see. That's a bad call. Well, Fisher agreed with you. Number two on him. Brad Soderberg, I'm sure, agrees silently as Pierre Pierce goes into the line. This is a guy who had some problems off the court, redshirted last year, pled guilty to assault-causing injury in 2002 in a case that really riveted and polarized the campus in Iowa City. There were accusations of favoritism. More than 2,000 people signed petitions alleging preferential treatment. He did sit out last season as a red shirt. He has come back this year, and Steve Alford said there really hasn't been any recurrence of the problems that they saw last season in terms of uh, the fans on campus and, and the internal strife that they saw at Iowa. I'll well, be interested to see how his career ends up unfolding. because We talked with Riley Wallace, head coach in Hawaii earlier this year. He said life is really about second chances. Pierre Pierce has gotten a second chance at Iowa. Josh Fisher hitting right there, giving him four points. This is Horner. Now Horner has it blocked, but gets it back. Shot clock to 15. This is Pierce. Pierce hanging. And they call the offensive foul. Wow. Wow, that well, is four on Pierre Pierce. Well, Pierre Pierce has been able to drive the ball to the basket. So often it's been a teammate who's been able to free him up. A lot of times you think that, that it's the guy who's going one-on-one -on -one who creates the opening. But Pierre Pierce, see, he got the easy call when he went up, and it looked like it was a clean block. But then, Gray is guarding him, and he leans in, and it probably wasn't an offensive foul. But see, it works out evenly. So Pierce going to the bench. Now Bryant has it knocked away. It went off Bryant. It's going to go to Iowa. And this is one way Pierre Pierce has been able to be effective. And Greg Bruner is posting up. Watching screen his own man. Ends up clipping Anthony Drea in the process. And that's how Pierce gets a lane to the basket. They're very crafty at being able to read screens, read their own men, and using their own bodies to create openings for their teammates. This is Worley. Left it well short, but picking up the rebound and laying it in is the walk-on, Kurt Spurgeon. Oh, St. Louis could just shore up their defensive rebound. They might be in this game. The career high, by the way, for Kurt Spurgeon of four. They're going to set the world on fire, but everyone making contributions for the Hawkeyes. Drea hits the three ball. Every once in a while, signs of life from SLU, but they need to shore up those defensive boards. They want to really get in this. Seven points for most teams is easy to make up, but not for SLU. They're a methodical team. Oh, Horner, that's a big three. <laughs> well, the coach's son, that's one of those, it's only a good shot if it goes. But sometimes you have to step up and say, hey, get on my back, fellas. Pierre Pierce out of the game with four fouls. Off score a little bit. The sophomore stepping up. A Sloan. This is Bryant. He tries a three. That doesn't go. Iowa doing a great job on the glass, and Worley comes out of there with it. We wind down to 13 minutes. Iowa's top score, Pierre Pierce on the bench with four fouls. Hawkeyes on top by 10. Bruner, beautiful feed inside. And they convert again. It is Spurgeon. And another new career high for Spurgeon. It just keeps climbing. He's doubled his career high. Kurt Spurgeon 
with six points. Iowa's lead is now up to a dozen as we play here in St. Charles, Missouri. Dave Revson, Doug Gottlieb. We are back in St. Charles, Missouri. Hawkeyes by a dozen. Some unlikely heroes stepping up, Doug. Yeah, it's been the Kurt Spurgeon show of late for Iowa. How about this? The youngster coming off the bench. He's a senior. DeWitt, Iowa. Off of the miss. Gets the board. Puts it in. And watch the heady play. Big fella has the ball. Bruner's looking for his teammate. Cuts to the basket. Unlikely heroes is probably the story of the NIT. You go to your bench, you say, look, we got seven scholarship players. Do you guys want to keep playing? Here's a guy that's been bringing it all year in practice. Now he gets a bigger opportunity. Kurt Spurgeon, who played at Southwest Missouri State, was recruited by Steve Alford, never played for him. Averaged nearly six points a game for them. So this is career high in Iowa, not his career high overall. But again, six points in this game and never scored more than three in a Hawkeyes uniform. Now Clark banks home the three. Take them any way they can get them. It's a little late here in the central time zone, isn't it? For the bank to be open. 50 to 41, St. Louis. Clark just tried it back. Now Varner, Fisher. Beautiful pass to Varner, who finishes it off. And Varner's going to go to the line. It almost seems like this game is scripted, Dave. Iowa hits just enough shots to keep St. Louis at an arm's length. But then St. Louis creating with their defense. Horner with the bad turnover. Varner with the steal. Oh, beautiful dish. Rewards the big fella. And Varner completes the three-point play as the foul was on Spurgeon. Number two on him. Now, Varner is 24 years old. He served on a Mormon mission to Latvia. I'll tell you what, it feels good to get a bucket. It doesn't matter if it's in the NIT, the NCQA tournament, or the Conference USA tournament. The bench kicking in for St. Louis in this one. Iowa's gotten some contributions as well. Now the steal by Hunt. He leaves it for Fisher, who lays it in, and the Billikens are making a run. Down by just four. And Steve Alford going to talk things over as St. Louis is on an 8-0 run. What has gotten into the Billikens? They decided, you know what? We want to play some basketball tonight. Jeff Horner is getting an earful. Another turnover, this one by Glenn Worley. Horner gets kind of blocked off on the play by Fisher, and Fisher runs the floor, and he is rewarded. So Josh Fisher getting the layup there, now has six points, and the Billikens back within four, the closest they have been since very early in the first half. Dave Reps and Doug Gottlieb with you. What's turned into a pretty good game here in St. Charles, Missouri. First round of the NIT between Iowa and St. Louis. We're at the Family Arena. First time that St. Louis has ever played at this arena. The Savage Center, their usual home arena, is being used for the NCAA wrestling. And the story of the second half is the Billikens have come out on fire, Doug. Yeah, and they've really gotten after Iowa, turned up their defense. And since Pierre Pierce has been out, that's when they've cranked up the defensive pressure because no one else from Iowa has the ability to put the ball on the floor and create. Again, Pierre Pierce out with those four fouls. Driving into the lane and drawing the foul is Jeff Horner. Ball's going to go against Anthony Drea. That's number three on him. Brad Soderberg's team within four. We're coming back to Missouri. Here, Pierce on the bench with four fouls, and the Hawkeyes have been struggling, guns. They have been struggling, but it's been St. Louis' ability to just make shots. Darren Clark, sometimes it's not pretty, but as long as it goes in, it definitely counts for three. Then creating offense off of your defense. St. Louis reward Barner for running the lane. Ben Fisher, he got the, he dished the ball on the first assist. Now he is rewarded by Bryant. You see Pierce on the bench, and Iowa has struggled mightily since he went out. Glenn Worley just missed inside, so the struggles continue. It's a 50-46 game. St. Louis could get within one with a three-pointer here. Glenn Worley just cannot miss that shot. He's an undersized freshman guardian, and he misses a dead 
layup. This is Fisher. They work the trap and they work it perfectly. Worley comes out of there with the steal. Now Horner gets it inside to Bruner. Nice spin move and the easy two for Greg Bruner. And St. Louis has gone to a lineup of mostly guards. Four guards on the court with the exception of Chris Sloan. And so we'll see if they're able to spread them out and defend with quickness, try and trap the basketball defensively and score with penetration offensively. This is Sloan. Now our top, Drea. That's a three ball. Anthony Drea into double figures with a dozen. And Iowa's inability to contain Sloan creates Drea's three-point shot. So it is a three-point game. 52-49. Bruner spinning in on slow, nowhere to go. Now Horner going to reset things. Still 12 to shoot. Horner, ah, blocked by Fisher, gets it back and puts it on the rim and in. <laughs> Couple of competitors on the floor, huh? Fisher and Horner going at it. 17 points now for Jeff Horner. Now Clark, he has it blocked, but he draws the foul. And you can see the basic change in philosophy from Brad Soderberg. He likes to run the blocker mover offense with two big guys constantly screening. But you know what? When you're playing against Iowa, Iowa is so big and so physical that they're unable to penetrate with only three guards on the floor. Horner with a very, very difficult basket. I didn't think the first shot was a good shot, nor was the second one, but he obviously is a competitor. He had a big three right from the bench, about a full range three, and then that jump shot, single-handedly trying to help Iowa move on. That ball went on Kurt Spurgeon, number three on him. Take a look at a much deeper Billikens bench. Hawkeyes going with just seven scholarship players. They've had some defections, they've had some injuries, they've had some academic problems. Darren Clark, I played with Chris Humphreys in high school, the outstanding freshman from Minnesota. It's one of two free throws now with eight points. You see the Hawkeyes bench here, Pierce there on the end, the guy they want to get back in there. He's got four fouls. At what point do you put him back in, Doug? Well, normally you would say you got to get him in as soon as possible. He's your leading scorer. He's a sophomore, but he's played major minutes in his two years at Iowa. However, his inability to understand that foul trouble means you can't drive the ball and have the chance to create an offensive foul leads me to believe Steve Alford will leave him over there for a while, probably to about the four-minute mark. Iowa having a lot of troubles with the turnovers. Oh, not been a problem for St. Louis, and Fred has a beautiful drive through the lane. Oh. There is an athletic supporter laying on the floor. I believe it belongs to Greg Bruner. A great move there by Drea. Cuts it to a two-point game at 54-52. Now Boyd trying to make something happen, and Brody Boyd has been very quiet, but a big two points right there. Fisher. This is Clark inside the arc and he misses it badly. Boy gonna pull things out, gets it to Horner. Now Spurgeon. Beautiful cut down low and Boyd off the feed from Bruder. Well, as Anthony Drea had a beautiful move to the basket, the next two possessions for Iowa. Brody Boyd has simply worn him out defensively, moving, cutting, moving, cutting, and finally getting two easy looks. We're at the eight-minute mark in a six-point game. St. Louis got as close as two. The hanger by Fisher pulls him to within four. Got a heck of a game here. Both teams going at it. Big fellas never touching the basketball. It's a guard's dream. It was an ugly first half, to say the least. It's turned into a very competitive second half. The miss there by Boyd, and now the Billikens, again with a chance to cut it to two or one with a three. Well, he did not miss by much, and Anthony Dre is holding his shorts when he has to guard him. He is so physically worn out from having to chase Jordy Boyd along. 
Slow to Fisher. Fisher working on Horner. Barner now. That doesn't go. And Spurgeon coming out of there with the rebound. Fisher is just asked out of the game. St. Louis looks a little bit tired here. Iowa has a chance to get this lead back to six. Now Worley right in front of his own bench, and he appears to have stepped on the sideline. So another turnover for the Hawkeyes. They've had a lot of problems with that in the second half. Meanwhile, Anthony Dre and company hanging around. It's a four-point game in St. Charles, Missouri. News presentation of the postseason NIT brought to you by Odor Eaters. Put Odor Eaters in, kick foot odor and wetness out. They are fired up for their hoops here in St. Louis. Regional finals here this year. They'll have the final four next year. Today, a first round NIT game in St. Charles, Missouri. It's turned into a good one. Iowa trailed just once in this game, two to nothing. But now, thanks in large part to Anthony Drea, the Billikens threatening to go ahead again down just four to. Yeah, a couple big three-point shots and then a beautiful drive. But he's been worn out. He's had to ask out of the game because he's chasing Brody Boyd around. He never stops moving. And Brody Boyd ran cross-country when he's in high school. And I think maybe Drea needs to get out on that track if he's going to guard him again. Now Boyd has been running circles in this one. He's had a good second half. Six points after just two in the first half. Now Barner. Fisher tries to get it to Sloan. It went off his hands. And Anthony Gray has been effective. Watch him cutting to the basket. And whoop, that is the hesitation, the knee locker. I hope Greg Bruner's parents weren't watching. Maybe Kivo, you just fast forward to it real quick. Never happened. Hawkeyes do lead it by four. As Horner leaves that one short battle on the boards. And the Billikens, who've been dominated on the glass all night, come out of there with the board as Sloan, a physical player for them, gets out of there with it. Now the 3-2 zone as Pierre Pierce looks like he's going to check back into the game for the Hawkeyes with four fouls. Trying to quell this newfound offense from St. Louis. Low, nowhere to go. Gets it back out to Bryant. Now Fisher, good pass inside to Sloan. Good head fake, and he puts it in. And this is a problem for Iowa. They're predominantly a man-to-man -man team. They switch to a zone. They start staring at the back basketball, and they allow an easy cut and basket. St. Louis shooting very well in the second half, as are the Hawkeyes, frankly. It's been a very well-played second half after a sloppy first half. Bruner, the spin move, Barner knocks it away, and they call him for the foul. It's going to be number one on Ross Barner. As we remind you, we have more NIT first-round action tonight on ESPN 9 Eastern Time. It is the battle of former Duke assistants, Quinn Snyder and Tommy Amaker going head-to-head -head as Missouri takes on Michigan, 9 p.m. Eastern Time over on ESPN. So Greg Bruner... Misses the first free throw. Guy who shoots about 56%. Pierre Pierce checks back in for Steve Alford's crew with those four fouls. And it'll be interesting to see if Iowa sticks with the zone because of Pierce's foul trouble. Ruder now has eight. There you see Pierre Pierce back on the floor for Iowa. team that does not have a very deep bench so did a very good job to stem the tide there and keep themselves in the lead with Pierre Pierce out. Freya back in there as well for St. Louis as you saw. Slow backing in. Now gets it back and Sloan has it blocked but he's fouled. That foul's going to go against Glenn Worley. That's number three on Worley. 
It is the NIT first round, Iowa and St. Louis at the Family Arena in St. Charles, Missouri. First time the Billikens have ever played here. Dave Revs and Doug Gottlieb with you. Jeff Porter, 17 points leading the way for the Hawks. As Sloan, a native of St. Charles, a senior for St. Louis, misses the first free throw. Turnovers have been a huge part of the story in this one. The Billikens, for all their struggles in other facets of the game, just six turnovers stuff. And uh, for Iowa, turnovers, turnovers have been an issue all year long, especially at costly times. You know, every time they've gotten about six, eight points up, they've turned the ball over, and that's allowed St. Louis to just hang around. This is Worley. Shot clock winding down towards 10, and Worley hits the pull-up. Uh, he is so, so much more effective facing the basket. We actually saw him miss a, like a dead layup with his back to the basket as a post-up. But you have to know who you are. You have to know what your game is. And he's a guy who's much better facing up. Former Iowa Mr. Basketball has 10. Those his first two in the second half. Sloan, strong to the hoop, gets it back. And kicks it back out. Shot clock down to 12. Barner still cannot hit. As Barner's had a lot of problems. Well, there's the case where he should roll to the basket. I know he's normally a jump shooter, but if you, you're 0 for 4 now, when you pick, don't pop, roll to the basket, get yourself a layup. Now Horner. Little baby hook by Hansen, and he hits first two for Eric Hansen. And the Billikens want to talk things over. Now this is a, a called play from Iowa. They spread the floor, and when penetration comes, the weak side post steps in, tries to create a quick seal, and Jeff Horner hitting his teammate. And both teams have been so much more effective when they're driving to the basket. When they stood out and tried to shoot threes, they've been ineffective. When they penetrated, all of a sudden, it's like the, the parting of the Red Sea. So the lead back up to six for the Hawkeyes. As we remind you, NBA Fast Break Tuesday follows us, 9 Eastern time here on ESPN2. Kevin Frazier, Tim Legler, Greg Anthony, David Aldridge. A crowded set. We'll talk about LeBron James. He is facing the Chicago Bulls tonight and on a roll. Allen Iverson, what is his future in Philly? Sixers in action tonight and possible finals preview as Sacramento takes on New Jersey. That is all coming up at 9 Eastern time, NBA Fast Break Tuesday. Here it's 63-57 Iowa in the first round of the NIT, which most people probably know is the oldest postseason college basketball tournament. It was the most important tournament for quite some time. It began in 1938, a year before the NCAA, and now up to 40 teams for the last few years. And St. Louis, way lo a long time ago, 1948, they won this tournament back when it was in many ways bigger than the NCAA tournament. But this is a chance for these teams to kind of recapture some of the glory to their season. You know? Nobody likes to not make the NCAA tournament, but if you can get to New York City, you're a part of something special, a couple more nationally televised games, and a chance to walk away as a champion winning your last game. It's something special. Well, both teams have played the second half as if that is very important to them, shooting very well. 63% for the Hawkeyes, 60% for the Billikens. 'll get it to go Sloan has been great on the glass back to Fisher and this time Josh Fisher hits and Jeff Warner simply decided not to defend Fisher Fisher was allowed to shoot a wide open jump hook then get the then crash the glass for a rebound and then get an easy pushback and now Boyd throws it away so another turnover for the Hawkeyes it has been a problem all night for Steve Alford's crew and that's why the lead is just four points we're coming back all right, so Florida a and the only team in the tournament with a losing record. Going to move on here. It's a 63-59 lead for the Hawkeyes. More NIT action comes your way later tonight. First round action over on ESPN. 9 p.m. Eastern time, Missouri takes on Michigan. Michigan team to beat Iowa in round one of the Big Ten tournament. They will go at it, and that is just moments from now. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. How about that? We could see a rematch of the Big Ten tournament in the second round in the NIT. Oh, 
This is Dre now. And he gets fouled. It's go, going to go against Brody Boyd. Number two on Brody Boyd. And they're going to say it was a shooting foul, so Drea goes to the strike. So Drea hits the first one. Guy who did not get a qualifying ACT score until June before his freshman year. He's going to sign with St. Peter's in Jersey City, but when he got that score, Brad Soderberg gave him a call. He said, I got a plane ticket for you. Come on out. Drea came the next day to visit St. Louis. And St. Louis has been able to get back in this game playing four guards and Sloan at the, their biggest position. All athletic players that are able to penetrate and get after people defensively. It is a two-point game. St. Louis 10 and four in the Brad Soderberg era and games decided by three or fewer. They like the close game. Pierre Pierce misses that one. And Reggie Bryant bringing it the other way. Sloan in transition. We've got a tie ball game. And the Hawkeyes want to talk it over. Uh, you, you wonder how Iowa has allowed St. Louis back in this game. Jeff Horner is third team all Big Ten, but this is about 10th team all Big Ten defense. Watch, no hand up, no activity, and Fisher simply easy layup. It's almost as if Jeff Horner said, I'm too tired to play defense, and Chris Sloan, his activity, the biggest player on the floor for St. Louis at about six foot seven. That's been the key. Brad Soderberg said, scrap the big guys. You big fellas come over and sit next to me, help me coach. I'm going with the guard. Well, it has worked for Brad Soderberg as his team has come back to tie this one up at 63. The one thing you do have to say in defense of the lack of defense is the fact that well, these Iowa players have to be tired. I mean, they're dealing with seven scholarship players as they have been for much of the end of the season. Here. No question about it, but Bob Horner is Jeff Horner's father. He coached him in high school, coached Dean Oliver in high school. And look, if you're a coach's son, you know one thing, if you're going to rest, you rest at the offensive end, not the defensive end, especially within five feet of the basket. Well, Horner has played 37 minutes, and we've played just over 37 minutes. Not a guy who's getting a whole lot of rest. 63-63 game. You see the story? The timeouts, the fouls. Bruner unties this one. Now, just as we criticized Jeff Horner, he sets a beautiful screen. Horner comes over, and Sloan is a mismatch inside. He's too light. He goes to the steal, and that's why Bruner gets, gets the slam dunk. Now penetrating is Bryant. That one is well long. And the Hawks coming the other way. It has not been a great day for Reggie Bryant. Now Bruner throws one off Sloan's foot. They'll reset the shot clock on the kick. Oh, that's a beautiful screen. And you, you just can't go for a steal at this point in the game for Chris Sloan. I know you're undersized, but you play man up. You make Bruner hit a shot over you. Now another beautiful cut to the hoop, and this time it's Pierre Pierce who's the beneficiary. Asleep at the wheel, the St. Louis defense. And the Billikens are going to talk here, and Brad Soderberg is really, really angry on the bench. His team had tied it up. Now they're down by four. Back in St. Charles, Missouri, you see the game story there. The Hawkeyes on top. 67 to 63 over the Billikens, a game that was tied at 63. Brad Soderberg's teams are all about defense, but you wouldn't have known in the last possession there. No, right? the pack defense is supposed to not allow people to cut to the basket and get easy open shots, but as uh, Bruner gets the ball inside, there is a flashing Pierre Pierce and some type of breakdown defensively. You see the St. Louis players pointing to one another who messed up, and Soderberg is simply furious. You know, he, he's grown the goatee. And uh, we talked to some folks today in the St. Louis basketball program, and they said his wife is the only one who likes the goatee. I got to tell you, when he's upset, it's a good look with the goatee. Kind of fierce looking. He's a real soft-spoken guy, too, so it gives you a little more intimidation factor there. But certainly saw there that Brad Soderbergh can get upset. A Dick Bennett disciple, and Dick Bennett disciples don't like to see their teams not play defense. 
Not that any coaches do like to see their teams not play defense. Drea spinning and hit it. Beautiful isolation play out of the break, and Drea has Worley on him. Again, four guards for St. Louis. There's constantly a mismatch for Iowa. The lead again down to two. St. Louis has tied it in the second half. The only time they've led in the game, though, was two to nothing. The clock is still running, so they're going to have to add a few seconds back to the clock as Iowa is called timeout here. Now, this is a nice set play from Brad Soderbergh. What he says is, let's find the mismatch. Who's ever got Glenn Worley on him? We know it's a big guarding a little, and that allows you to try and penetrate the basketball. So they, so what they, what they did was they had Anthony Drea come up, set a back screen, and then catch the ball and have a clear out. That's how he was able to lay the ball in. The officials are consulting right now. They're going to take a look and see how much time we should have left on the clock. It's probably a good three or four seconds. Well, there's the timeout at about Actually, 47 seconds. 47 seconds, and the clock keeps running, keeps running. Well, we said St. Louis' defense is asleep at the wheel. Apparently, the scorekeeper a slip of the wheel. Pretty good country band as well, a slip of the wheel. Glad you worked that in. Yes. That's the Oklahoma coming out here. Uh, here, here here's the the Anthony Drea clear out. You see the clear out, and he's able to penetrate to the basket. Brody Boyd there for a charge, but I guess at this point in the game, the officials say, let's just swallow our whistles and let the fellas play. And the officials are clearly trying to see exactly where the timeout occurred. Well, let's take a look at it on our own right here where the Hawkeyes signal for the timeout. It's right there at about 47 seconds. There's the hand that goes up at 47 seconds, 46.9 or so. Clock keeps running. I, I think 47 seconds. You're going with 47? 47 and 25 on the shot clock. That means that for St. Louis, you simply play for a stop here. You don't want to foul. Whatever you do, you don't want to foul, especially Boyd and Horner. You nailed it. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, exactly 47. That's a one possession game, as you point out at, at this juncture, Doug. You know, 25 on the shot clock, so 22 second differential. Now they have 47 minutes, by the way, right? On the clock, it's over the basket, so. That's the real problem. Now they've got 4.7 seconds. It's, it's really turned into just a clock fiasco. Yeah, see, this, this is bracketology 101. You have to know how to break down the score clock, the timeout situation. The shot clock should still be on. Now the shot clock's at 35. They need to reset that to 25. And then perfection has been attained. There you go. There we go. It took us a while, but we got there. 47 seconds to go in the game. As Doug mentioned, 22-second differential. So St. Louis just going to tough it out here defensively and try to get a stop. You certainly don't want to follow that guy. Horner has it knocked away by Drea. Uh, you, you got the mismatch with Worley. He's a big fella guarding Drea, who's a guard. Now Drea's spinning. And he draws the foul. That foul's going to go against Glenn Worley, number four on him. It's Iowa and St. Louis coming down to the wire from the Family Arena in St. Charles, Missouri. Dave Revson and Doug Gottlieb with you. As soon as we are done here, it's NBA Fast Break Tuesday. All the gang will have the latest on Allen Iverson and much more. Possible finals preview between Sacramento and New Jersey as well. But here, we've got a good one. 67 to 65 is one team season. Maybe just 22 seconds away from coming to an end. 57% free throw shooter. If you're St. Louis, you have to prepare for who you want to foul in case he misses. And Trey rattles home the first one. He's had a great game, 19 points for him. If you're Iowa, you want to probably already have your offensive play set if he makes it so that you don't have to call a timeout. St. Louis can't set their defense. Trey gets the friendly roll on both of them now. 20 points for him, 14 in the second half. We'll see whether the Hawkeyes call timeout. Looks like they're going to, and they do. Jeff Porter comes across the timeline, and Steve Alford going to draw something up. You see the look he gave Jeff Horner? He said, you're Mr. Basketball in the state of Iowa. You're my leader. You're third team, all Big Ten. And despite the fact he's going out and pleading his case with his officials, he gave Jeff Horner a look like, how could you turn the ball over in a situation like that? 
The Hawkeyes have not shot particularly well from the stripe down the stretch this year. Just over 68%, but to put that in perspective for you, this is a team that only shoots 66.7% as a team for the free throw lines. They actually do slightly better in the last four minutes, so they've been great today. Yeah, they've been shooting great today, but you know, listen, this is what separates a team that finishes in fourth place in the Big Ten, the year that they only get three teams in, from maybe winning one of those games against Northwestern like they lost at home, or beating one of those big teams in the Big Ten. You get two more wins in the Big Ten Conference, you're in the NCAA tournament. And it's turnovers like that one. It's it's a lack of awareness defensively because they've been the better team for about 32, 33 minutes. They were, they were without question, the better team on this floor, but they fell asleep defensively. They turned the basketball over, and St. Louis just came out with a different lineup, a smaller lineup, and that's how they've gotten back in this thing. Interesting to note now that St. Louis has no timeouts left, either does Iowa, but were Iowa to make one right here the Billikens would not be able to stop the clock and set anything up so Brent Soderberg I'd have to imagine Doug told them what to do in that timeout yeah and St. Louis only has five team fouls so it'll be interesting to see if they they mention that to their team because you may want to allow this clock to get down to six five seconds if I was going for a last second play and then try and create a foul make Iowa do the exact same thing all over again obviously the danger there is make sure you don't follow them when they're shooting So they get it into the hands of Pierre Pierce, who's had some foul trouble. So the leading score has 14 in the ballgame. Pierce going to go one-on-one, -on -one, lays it up with the left hand, and gets it to go. Now no timeouts for the Billikens. But now the clock kept running. It kept running and running and running. And this, this is... <laughs> I, it is just a disaster with the clock. No, it's just obviously whoever is using it, running this clock. Remember, this is the first basketball game to be played here this year. But whoever is running that clock does not know the rules of college basketball. It doesn't matter that the clock is now stopped because it allows Iowa to set their defense. It also, watch, watch the layup here. A beautiful shot by Pierre Pierce. Oh, Chris Sloan should have jumped in and taken charge there. That is just a great shot. Yeah. Off balance with the left hand, and it goes through with about five seconds. Well, five seconds is plenty of time to get a good look up at the basket. It allows for two things. Now, Iowa gets a chance, like a timeout, to set their defense, and St. Louis gets a chance to call their offense. But I think the advantage goes to Iowa with this clock malfunction. Whose hands do you want it in for St. Louis? No, I, I think you have to put the, the, the ball in the hands of Fisher because he's your assist leader, he's your senior. This is his last game. Drea has been incredibly effective, but it's been in the half-court set when he's had the mismatch. I don't know if he'd be as effective in the full court. They are going to reset it to five seconds. Now watch the drive in Sloan. You have to step in there and make Pierre Pierce dish the ball out. You have to take a charge, but credit Pierce. Watch the ability to hang in the air, shoot with your offhand, and just get enough roll. So the Billikens, just five seconds away, potentially from seeing their season come to an end. Hunt is gonna inbound. They have no timeouts, remember. They get it to Sloan. Sloan, the local kid, kicks it in the corner. This would win it. He hits it, and St. Louis has won! <laughs> Anthony Drea, the hero. An incredible comeback by the Billikens. The only other time they led in this game was 2-0. Wow, wow. Obviously, the play was to get the ball to Fisher, but Chris Sloan gets the ball, penetrates, and kicks off just in a nick of time. Anthony Drea is the hero. 23 points in the ball game. And you see the distraught Hawkeyes. They are headed back to Iowa City with a loss as Anthony Drea is the hero here in St. Louis. That appears like the officials are going to make sure this is a three. And it's confusing because there's so many lines on the floor. We can't see because the ESPN logo. I think unquestionably it was a three. I, I don't think there's any question about it. Let's see if we can see from this angle just to make sure. That's a three-point shot in international competition, so I know it counts in college. So Anthony Drea hits the game winner. 23 points for him, including the one 
that seals the deal as St. Louis, in a game they trailed virtually the entire way, comes out of there with a win, and Steve Alford, obviously disappointed. A tough season for the Hawkeyes comes to an end in very dramatic fashion, and Brad Soderberg's team lives to see another day. What a finish, and what a huge shot by Drea. And this is why you cannot turn the ball over your...